Hello everybody and welcome back on the Fashion Rack. Leather is a controversial topic nowadays. It's a beautiful material, but dead animals. And if you wear plastic leather, microplastics kill the fish. What's the solution? Today we're gonna make our own leather. By now I think most people have heard of kombucha, but if you have not, it's a fermented tea drink. And what many people don't know, the fermentation process is done by little creatures called Oompa Loompas. Okay, I got you, but it is uh, actually made with a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. It's alive! And believe it or not, but today we're gonna turn this blob of bacteria into an actual leather like material. At least that's the plan. Therefore, we're gonna use a basic standard recipe for brewing kombucha at home. I am not Siri, but I certainly can provide you with a basic recipe. I'm not Siri. <laughs> Well, and I'm not stupid. We can also just guesstimate it ourselves. I mean, what can go wrong? Food poisoning. Food poisoning. Unexplained severe illness. Necrosis? Hmm. Well, okay. If you want to actually drink the kombucha, maybe do some proper research first. That is, if you want to live happily ever after. If you just want to grow the blob, blob, blobity blob, we're safe. But if you've never made kombucha before, you still you might want to use the recipe because you require more sugar than you'd actually think. Don't worry. It's gonna be fermented. The carbs are gonna carbonate or something and it will be ending up not so sweet. Make sure to dissolve the sugar well and let the tea cool down for a bit. Then you need the scooby dooby a blob of bacteria and yeast. They're available to buy online. But why not living on the edge? Get them on the black market. The dark web. Because since this Kobe is some kind of ever-growing family, there's actually a lot of people who are giving it away for free on online marketplaces. And you will usually also get a little bit of the starter liquid, which is not nothing more than already brewed kombucha kickstart the fermentation. The only thing that's different from the normal kombucha brewing process is using this tray instead of a pot to ferment it in, in the hope to create a large film of this scoby. Then you can cover it up, but I'm just gonna let it sit in my oven. Do we turn it on? No. Of course not, you freak. Do you put your own family in a burning hot oven? Four to six days later. Knock knock. Let's ask how the scoby is doing. Oh my god. I really don't know what's all on the window of the other, but it's like almost like transferred to the screen. Scoby wants to get out. So I made two and I actually have the feeling they're doing quite well. Very thin. This is only day four and I mean we need at least seven days, but probably more. When I'm cooking my... Oops. I think that's... Done. When I'm cooking up here, I feel like it gets slightly warm inside. It makes it look really disgusting and condensed, but also might speed up the process a little bit. Four to six more days later. Children, dinner is ready. It's been in there for about, I don't know how long to be honest. I think about a week, probably a day or two more than a week. I lost a little bit count. But realistically, I think maybe I'll leave it for one or two days more in there. Better have it a little too thick than a little too thick. It's a little bit messy here, but I do want to get it out. Are we gonna drink the kombucha now that's inside of here? Actually, not drinkable. Admittedly, that was a trick question, just to check if anybody did their homework here. But no, don't drink kombucha brewed in metal or plastic. It ain't safe. We're trying to live on the edge here, not tip over it. Wow. I never really grabbed this scoby like this, and it does actually feel like touching some kind of that animal skin. Which is a good sign, I guess. It's quite nice, honestly. <laughs> Give it a quick bath. Universal cleaner, because, well, it's uh, universal. Like just a little drop. But if you don't want this kind of lingering, interesting smell around the house, I would recommend maybe washing with a little more soap and maybe washing it a couple of times. This was definitely one of the most smelly garments I ever made. Except maybe for like <laughs> the plant top. Look at birds. But uh, no comment. It's supposed to be coming sun here. That's why this particular spot. Uh oh. Wasps. So I hang the Scooby Dooby Dip Dubs on the washing rack, but then I got an epiphany. At least I thought to be clever and dry them flat on this oven slash barbecue equipment to not get them out of shape, which soon became clear it uh, wasn't the best idea. You guys, 
It is kind of crazy. <laughs> never saw real, like, fresh, dead animal's skin. But this is what I imagine it would look like. I am partly fascinated, partly grossed out, not gonna lie. It's been a little bit smelly too. <laughs> it's been quite smelly. Gotten a lot, a lot, a lot flatter. Like, it's almost papery thin now. It's also sort of sticky to your body. Also, I thought to be super clever with drying it flat on this oven uh, tray. Which were clean, at least to my eye. But as you can see with this black stain, I feel like because the scoby is so heavily acidic, it's really reacting with everything it comes in contact with. Although I love this look because it's such a scary kind of, this could be the perfect Halloween outfit. Or, the, or really other god fashion outfit too. I think I'm gonna process it a little bit more to see what the possibilities are. I feel like it's so kind of smooth that if you go in with some kind of paints or inks, it's just not gonna hold. Then I was going through my craftsy stuff and I have this kind of gold flakes. Uh, well, they're still silver flakes. Maybe put the fan that way because this stuff is lightweight and it also is something that sticks incredibly well to almost everything even if you don't want it to <laughs> now you see there was one flake and it just kind of sticks on your fingers on your little oily sweaty fingers so i'm just applying a generous amount of spray glue and cover the entire scooby dooby skinny vegan eco bio leather in the silver foil flakes maybe you have enough material you might want to do some tests because i was rubbing a bit too much and was losing a lot of the shine then i realized i had just a little too little foil flakes to cover the entire two things there were still a lot of sticky spots so i went in with some baby powder which uh reduced the shine even more look i never said i was a genius that was you or wait it might have been me and because I wanted this tutorial to be more about the DIY biomaterial experiment than a garment sewing tutorial. I mean, what can you even make with these two small pieces of leather? <laughs> And I had even some holes in there, probably from air bubbles during the brewing, which made it even harder. So my plan was basically just cutting some squares, sewing it together, ready to call it a garment. Then realized things were ripping open. The material wasn't that strong as I thought it was. Although I'm normally a little bit opposed to using glue for the construction of a garment, I didn't have so much choice here. And also, and fun fact, real latex garments are also glued together. So I feel like if you want to make this work for an actual garment you have two choices you either look into how latex clothes are made or you do tests with different fermentation periods to create a thicker and stronger scooby de doo blue blue blah 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 bla. okay i promise that was the last time moral of the story if you want to experiment with this i would say make a big batch make a lot of trays so that you can do tests experiment with the right thickness and do some experiments if you want to sew it or glue it thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe share it with your vegan fashion friends and i hope to see you in the next one. Oh, and watch my other video Yo! Yeah.